peace without freedom. Your freedom without justice. Stand for justice. Who threatens the very backbone of Zimbabwe's agrarian? Seven is referred to by many as an outright dictator. No peace without freedom. No freedom without justice. Stand for justice. For a new Zimbabwe. 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 Father who are together, and mother who is with you now, give us this day our daily bread. Yes, God, now more than ever, provide for us. Forgive us our trespasses. Indina Hirombo. Yes. Mama, forgive me. I... God, now, please. Open up, Chuck. It's me. Cinder and Indiba, we will not be long. Speaking of Indiba, why are he and his punk ass brothers still waving AKs in my face every time I come here? You would think they would at least pretend to know me by now. No respect. Madam Clever, I'm sick of having to see them strut around like they're hot shit. I swear, if those ass for Madam Clever, Jack, I said you to invite yourself in as always, but could you please, Ewan? And I should not smoke in here. Could you please put yourself together for my sake at least? I've had a very hard day as you can imagine. You had a hard day. You had a fuck you, Chuck. You cannot imagine the day I've had. That smoldering wreckage you're responsible for is just the beginning of the almighty ass chewing I'm going to get back in New York. I am responsible for? How could you say it? I should come here to help me fix this. I want your finger. Oh, out. please don't play innocent. There are more of your pamphlets floating around in the wind than there's blood on the ground. People said they even heard the attackers chanting your mantras throughout the whole ordeal. What do you think? You can just bust up a government convoy without me noticing, huh? Hmm? What have you always told me? Keep a clean record. How about I done You must keep it clean or keep it secret. What you've pulled qualifies as neither. Look. I'm not that pissed about the convo. Mugabe and his boys had it coming. It's your timing, buddy. Your timing. Why go badass now? My timing? I would not know how to time such a thing if I wanted to. I don't want to. That's the point. Why do I have to convince you of how people... Because that's the way it is. And you can start by telling me where you were last night. What do you mean? That perimeter we worked on? painstakingly worked on to keep you secret and safe. You went outside it without telling me. I know you did, don't deny it. What were you doing out there? I was meeting someone. Who? Who were you meeting? Someone! Who the fuck is someone? That's some Shona name I don't know about? Who? Your team? Some generals? Obama, maybe? <laughs> Santa Claus. <laughs> Were you meeting Mugabe? Having a little chit chat out in the bush? Jumping Stop! Stop me going rogue! You're trying to play double agent? Don't Stop it, you know better! Do I? What? Convince me. Who were you with? Go on. Be honest. Two years of hard work together, you can be honest with me. What's with the woman? Bullshit. <laughs> Don't make up some bitch to cover up your I am not lying. What would you rather me say? That I had an army out there, that I was arming them up, that I was charging them up? How about peace? How about I went out there myself and shot up one of the trucks? How's that for clean or secret? Look at you! You've mastered sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't buy your words. Or at least I don't care who you're fucking out in the bush. And I don't care whether you were behind this attack or not. It doesn't matter. I'd like to think you were. I was not behind you. But of course it matters. Lives have been lost and there's blood all over my name. How can you say it does not matter? It doesn't matter so long as you can deny it convincingly. Trust me. 
Now pack your shit and let's go. I've got a chopper coming two hours to fly your ass out of here. What? Put some shit in a bag, close the bag, <laughs> and come with me. We're not leaving the gifts without right now. First of all, we need to get you out of here before Mugabe's fuss starts sniffing around. Second of all, we need to nip this in the bud and finally secure you some support. I need you in New York ASAP. No. You're appearing in front of the Security Council in two days to no, announce this attack not. and start clearing your name. I had a contact wrangle us an emergency meeting. It was a tough sell, let me tell you. I may have to do some things, but I won't get you back no. later. I'm not going. I heard you! I just don't care! I don't give a shit about the anti-UN, anti-US stick up your ass. If you trust me at all, then you need to shut your mouth and come with me. It's time to swallow your pride, quit your whining, and take your new Mandela stick on the road now. Chuck, hello. We have listened to you quite enough. Where the fuck is this coming from? We do not have time for this. What do you think my going there will do? I think that if I show them that I'm civilized, I like most rock set the table and rock on two legs, they will finally take an interest? Please! Took tens of thousands of lives to prove to them Rwanda was in a crisis. Don't get me started on your CIA frenzy. Oh, please, please. Don't give me your put upon intellectual bullshit. What can they do? Hmm? What can they do that will actually make a difference? I can't tell you right now, all I can say is that it's big. So drop the attitude and let's go. How big? Chuck. How? Big. Nothing is in stone, and you know I can't talk until it's in stone. Then hit me with your best shot, as you say. Stop said. it. Let's go. You're killing me. Did you hear me? I said let's go!
deal with the little bloodshed on the way. Czechoslovakia doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> and find me as many successful liberations as you can that didn't use outside help. Go on, smart ass. I'll wait. Kinda hard, huh? Maybe now you're starting to get the picture. For crying out loud, even my country needed a helping hand from the French. The French! <laughs> <laughs> and you can bet they wanted something in return. Chuck, you get that you don't trust us. I don't trust us either. But you're going to have to change your mind about some things if you want to save your country. One of those things is New York. Yeah, you'll have to play along a bit, and yeah, the city can be shifted. Not just that. I just, I can't just pick up and leave. People need me here. People need you in New York. I made a pledge to someone. Someone very oh, special to me, you would not you understand. Don't you're attached to that slut you were banging last night. Charlotte Van Rinsburg is not the slut. Don't talk about her that way. Now, I'm asking to protect the Lord's name in vain here. Holy shit! You're banging a white girl? <laughs> <laughs> a Murungu? I'm not banging anyone. Now, I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about my mother. Charlie, because now. My mother made me swear to never leave Zimbabwe. So I've done everything I could to change it for the better. To bring peace to it, not violence. I swear to her, I, I swore to her, I would stay put on until I've done, done everything I could to make this country right. Perhaps such a pledge means nothing where you come from. But here, it carries a great deal of weight. Look, Chuck. I've got a mom, too. <laughs> they love to hold you to things. It sounds like Mama Mbosa was a great lady. But she obviously didn't know what the hell she was talking woman! about. Woman! Don't you dare speak my mother that way! Don't you woman me, you son of a bitch! I am not one of your <laughs> mud hut homies! So you're not speaking to my mother like that, which will spoil Yankee mouth. Do you understand me? Do you? Chuck, let me go. Let me go right now. You do not want this. Chuck, listen. No, please. You listen. For once, you listen. Credit my mother with everything. Even as we speak, I'm standing on her bent back, eating the fruits of her labor. She's the one who gave me that book, you know. She walked to the missionary's home for years, scrubbing floors and washing clothes for him and his family. One day they gave him the book to take home. They no longer needed it. His son was going off to university in America, and they, uh, they no longer needed it. She told me that I, I, she came home from work that night. She said, I have a gift for you, my son. Football ass? No. She laughed. So much more precious. The gift of knowledge. I was disappointed at first. The gift of knowledge did not sound very exciting. But I soon caught on. Even though I could not read very well, I stayed up all night, sitting by the fire, learning all about history's great men and women. Learn all you can from that, Charles, she said to me. I did not understand how precious that idea was. Peter Kalinga. Peter was a man in our neighborhood who was known for having ideas about the government. Some said socialist, some said communist. It didn't matter. One night Peter disappeared. They found him three nights later on the outskirts of the city. Shot, stabbed, burned, hung, and disemboweled. The police conducted a full investigation. His death was ruled a suicide. Went to my mother I said, hey, my mother, the police are stupid, no? She said, no, Charles. They are powerful. But they are lying, everybody knows it, exactly. They are so powerful they can tell a lie like that and no one can tell them otherwise. I was confused, but I soon understood. That night the police came to our home, to our neighborhood looking for more Peter's subversive documents. They came to our home and found my book. The policeman stood like this, he said, what is this? What is this shit? This is a subversive document, no? The phone this boy says the lies. Mother said, no, no. He said, you are lying, you're not lying to me. The boy can even read, she cried. I can barely read myself. He raised his hand like this and he struck her. You should not talk to me that way of the police. You must respect me. I was so enraged, I threw myself on him, but he pushed me down. Kicked me once, twice, three times, four times for good measure. That'd be a lesson to you, boy. And I watched him on the floor. 
He started turning pages out of the book, one by one. Each page more painful than a boot in the chest. When he was done, he threw the rest of the book down and stormed out. My mother crawled to me, held me in her arms. She called with me there for an hour and looked me in the eye. Swear to me, child. Swear to me that you will not leave Zimbabwe until it's a better place. Learn. Learn all you can, you clever boy. Never leave to leave, never leave until you're changing for the good. I did not know what to think. I was just a little boy. What can I do? She was hit two days later crossing the bus, crossing the she was hit by a bus two days later crossing the road after work. And the police, the same police who stormed the house two nights earlier and stood by and did nothing. She died on the spot. I stitched the book back together with some tape and glue. I kept it ever since as a remembrance of her. After she died, I went to live in the Catholic orphanage in Harare. You know the rest. Mama, I, oh, what are you doing? It's affection, Chuck. I'm showing you affection. <laughs> oh, so unusual for you. Yes, it is. It never was my strongest suit. So, now you know how it all began. Do you understand now? Better than you probably realize. Charles, I know your mother made you pledge. I get that. But I think you're missing the most important part of that pledge, to learn. You have to learn everything you can if you want to save this place. And your mom got that. And learning in this case means leaving Zimbabwe for a little while. It also means leaving me. Getting you to New York will probably be my last act as your unofficial handler. Are you admitting defeat, Madam Clevenger? No, not at all. I might just get a promotion out of this thing. What I'm saying is that I've taught you everything I know, and you have to keep learning somewhere else with someone else. I hope you've learned a lot from me, at least. Yes, I have. More than I ever wanted to know. It's not simple. It's not all black and white like in a book. Life has changed for me since I started to realize it. Wow. That's what it's like when you play a game like this. A game, indeed. Give me half an hour. Finally, I thought you would never budge. Oh, there will be one condition. Name it. Charlotte is coming with me. No. <laughs> <laughs> Name something else. Seriously, Chuck, I only have clearance for one person, and that's you. If you want her, you have to take me. If you want me, you have to take her as well. You can have her here less than an hour. You might like her, though. Actually, she may take some time getting used to you. Thing you could just bend me over like this. <laughs> I told you, I don't have clearance. Yes, you do. You used it earlier to get me a meeting with the Security Council. You will use it again to see that she's transported out of here. She will leave room and board, of course, only she'll not be coming back here with me. So you have to provide for her a little longer. It's not safe for her to return here, and I don't have to tell her that. I'm sure she can keep my secret, though, just as I keep yours. Look at you. Just like that? What? Nothing. You've always been such a little geek. A little geek with an axe to grind. For a moment there, it was like I was looking at a real president. You even have a woman on the side. <laughs> <laughs> so what's this Charlotte woman like? Is she political? Found this I'm mistaken in the reclamation. She doesn't hold a grudge. She just wants peace and justice for her country, like me. Do you love her? Do you care? No. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a problem later, but at least it won't be my problem. I can see the attraction. Thank you. I'm glad you'll be to meet her. My mother, of course, never had the chance. I would just like to say that you have been good to me, Madam Clevenger, in your way. In my way. Just glad I could help. President Mboso, I'll be outside. By the way, you can call me Sonia from now on. And bring a pen and paper so you can work on your speech during the flight. Why? 
You know I always speak from the heart. Not anymore, you don't. You're in the big leagues. Don't eat before you get in the chopper either. You'll bark your guts out. <laughs> Dine Kuda, Mama, Dine Rombo, forgive me. <laughs> <laughs>